Hey guys, I'm Mike Roy, and today I want to teach you about sonar. How to interpret it, how to use it, how to set your sonar up beyond just the default settings and really understanding it and keeping it simple, but also maximizing it so you can apply this and have more success when you're fishing. So we're using Hummingbird Solex screens, and first we want to talk about our uh, 2D sonar or traditional sonar what we're looking at um right here so first thing to understand is our our um kilohertz okay so we're running 200 kilohertz so generally speaking you're going to be running uh 200 if you're shallow water fishing 200 is going to give you a 20 degree cone angle so basically think of an upside down ice cream cone coming out of your transducer what that means is about a third of the depth of water is going to be the size of your beam. So we're in roughly 20 feet of water. That means our beam size is going to be six, seven feet wide. So that's how much of the bottom we're covering. Now we'll explain, obviously, the benefit to side imaging is you're going to cover a lot more bottom. But for right now, um, with 200 kilohertz, that's what we're going to be using in shallow water. Um, if you're deep water fishing, you would be on a low frequency or 50 kilohertz, which is going to give you more power to penetrate um, into deeper depths. So um, the other thing you're going to hear a lot of is chirp. And what chirp does is chirp is using multiple frequencies. So right now, this transducer we're using is a traditional transducer. So we're running 200 kilohertz, okay, which is a high frequency. If we were using chirp, we'd be on a high frequency chirp and we would be running a range, probably 170 to 220 kilohertz. And that's going to be sending 50 different frequencies and it does give more advanced target separation okay um so i just want to explain the difference between the settings on the transducers if you are fishing shallower water you're going to be using 200 kilohertz or a high chirp okay if you're deep water offshore fishing that's really where you'll be using a low frequency um to penetrate the, the water okay um so we want to go through some of the settings here uh, so first setting we need to talk about is sensitivity depending on the brand of sonar that you're using um some call it gain there's different names for it but your sensitivity every unit no matter what brand you're using is going to have a sensitivity setting um so for this we need to be on the sonar page and we just adjust the rotary knob and that's going to give us adjust your sensitivity now too much sensitivity here and we're going to be cluttered up okay too low and you could have a whale swim under the boat you'd never see it so we want to find the right threshold on our sensitivity setting now another thing to note is we're going to come into our menu and we're going to go into switch fire there is clear mode and max but i'm going to show you the difference now so we are on max mode on this screen and we're marking fish. These are striped bass in about the 20 inch range. They're small striped bass, 15 to say 20 some odd inch, mid to high 20 inch fish. Okay, this is on our max mode. On this screen, we're running clear mode. Okay, so if you come into switch fire again, we're on, oops, come into switch fire here, we're in clear mode. Okay, now the difference in settings is going to be in the clear mode my sensitivity right now is set to about is set a little higher we're at, we're going to turn our sensitivity higher because the machine is filtering it on clear mode on our max mode setting we're going to run our sensitivity we're at 11 right now okay it's going to be set a little lower if i was running the same sensitivity say 18 on max mode and 18 in clear mode you're going to see the max mode is going to be too cluttered too cluttered of a screen um we don't want the bottom to be all red like that we want to be set down to about 11 10 or 11 okay so that that's because the machine is setting the sensitivity for maximum amount versus um a, a, a clearer amount 
the reason why we change this is in certain situations, if you're fishing real silty water and you're running max mode, your whole screen is going to be cluttered. Okay. So if you're in situations where you're in silty, muddy water, you're probably going to be on a clear mode. What I like to do in a lot of situations is I'll, I'll keep one unit set to clear and one unit set to max mode so I could differentiate and get my best image. Coming into our settings menu, we're gonna to go to sonar options and surface clutter. Default is set to five. I don't play around with this a lot, but what you will notice is sometimes if you do get a lot of clutter on the upper portion of your screen, you could bring this down and I'll bring my surface clutter down to two in some situations if, if there's a lot of uh, clutter on my screen. Um, but for right now, we're gonna leave that at the default, which is five. Now we're marking fish on our um, on our screen right here. Stripers on the bottom. Now I'm gonna show you what fish look like when you're moving fast on plane. We're moving 23 miles an hour. You're gonna see very small streaks. It's very subtle, but it's because the fish are moving through that beam very fast. Now, as I start to slow down, you'll see the marks become more defined more red, more solid. So very important that you know the difference when you're moving fast so you're still able to mark fish. All right guys, so we were just on plane running 25, 30 miles an hour. And if you look at that image, it was very small streaks. We came off plane and this is what we got. Big schools of stripers. Um, really thick schools of fish. So what I want to explain to you is the difference in shapes and sizes of our fish on sonar. So when we're going fast, those fish are, you know, we're moving 30 miles an hour. Those fish were just little streaks, little red streaks, because they're moving in and out of the, of our sonar beam very fast. Then when we come off plane, we're getting big red marks. Okay. Now, Depending on how long the fish is in the beam, that's going to give you your, your, the size of your mark. So for example, um, so for that example, at speed, the fish are coming in on the beam very quick. They're going to be very small. Okay. Now let's say these fish were sitting right under the boat and you know, the boat was still and the fish were literally just sitting under our boat. We just see big streaks across the stream because they are see they were staying in that beam. Okay. So don't be mistaken by the size of the beam does not necessarily indicate, or I mean the size of the mark doesn't necessarily indicate the size of the fish. It indicates how long that fish is in and out of the beam. Okay. Um, so <clears throat> another thing I'd like to talk about too is when we see an arch. Okay. Why, why is it in the shape of an arch when we mark fish? Well, you have to remember this upside down ice cream cone, this beam, when the fish first enters the beam, is that it's further away from the transducer. When it's in the center of the beam, it's now closer to the transducer, okay? Which is what draws the arch. When it exits the beam, it's further from the transducer. The center of the beam is the most powerful. It's like a flashlight. So the middle is the most powerful. The edges start to weaken. So the middle of your mark is gonna be the thickest and the most defined, okay? And then as it, as it fades out of the beam, the image is gonna to start to fade away, okay? Um, so it's very important to have a through hull transducer or a transducer that you could read at all times, even when you're doing 30 miles an hour, because just like we just saw, a lot of times we will find schools of bait and schools dense schools of fish now are you going to mark one fish at 30 miles an hour no but when you have big thick schools of dozens hundreds even thousands of of you know whether they're striped bass or or um a uh, a smaller bait fish okay you you'll mark those at on while, while we're traveling then we'll come off plane and that's when we'll find a big school of fish okay now can you tell the size of the fish by the size of the mark? To some degree you can. So I could tell the difference between bait fish and a game fish. So a bait fish being a, um, 
small, uh, we could use a bunker for example, or even small silver side, small shad that, you know, maybe our bait fish is this big, and then a predator fish being, you know, 25, 35, 45 inches, okay? Now, um, these fish, uh, we have a lot of schoolie size fish that are in the 20 inch range. So we're running max, uh, max mode for our sensitivity. If you're a freshwater fisherman and you're typically targeting um, large mouth bass, okay, those fish are gonna be, you know, typically two to five pounds. So it would make sense to run a max mode. If we're looking for giant fish, they or to just say, we'll say big striped bass. I'm not gonna call them giants, but big striped bass, which is gonna be, say they're 20 to 40 pound fish, we could run clear mode and be able to mark those fish because we're looking for a larger fish. Now, can I tell the difference between a 20 pound striped bass and a 40 pound striped bass? I can't. I don't know of any way you can. What I can tell is the difference in the size of the mark based on the speed of the boat. So if I'm going very fast, I know that I'm gonna get red marks that are gonna be small. If the fish are staying under the boat, I'll get big streaks under the boat. So what's the difference between your traditional sonar and your down imaging and when and why should I use um, each one? So basically, like we said, the 2D sonar is gonna give you more coverage. Your, tra your traditional sonar, oh, we're 15 feet of water, so we're getting about a five foot uh, coverage of bottom, okay? Now, in on our uh, down imaging, it's a very thin slice. So it's like a thin piece of paper going through the water. It's six inches thin. So we're not getting much coverage. It actually is wider beam to beam, but very thin, not getting much bottom coverage. But what we do get is a very clear picture, okay? Um, so if you look on this screen, for example, we're just marking big schools of school size striped bass. These are 20 inch size class fish, but on our 2D, um, we're running mega, running mega imaging and there is perfect target separation. Um, you know those are fish. Um, it takes all the guesswork out of it, okay? Um, this is excellent if we mark a tree or a wreck or a rock on the bottom, or um, you're gonna get uh, on our on our um, down imaging, we, we're gonna get a very clear, precise image, okay? So it eliminates any guesswork. Less bottom coverage, but greater detail. So with our down imaging, we're gonna talk about the frequencies with this. Okay, again, very thin amount of coverage, very small amount of coverage, greater detail. Now we are running mega imaging, okay? But we have a few options here. So if we come up, to our menu, we can run 455, 800, or mega, all right? So what the difference between uh, the 455 kilohertz and mega is 455 being a lower frequency. It's 455 kilohertz, okay? Which is gonna give us greater range. So if we wanted to cover, if we were in deeper water and wanna get more range from our unit, we're gonna run 455 and with side imaging in particular if we want to get better bigger cover a bigger amount of area we're gonna use 455 but for detail we want to use the higher frequency so 1000 kilohertz equals 1 megahertz that's why it's called mega imaging so mega imaging we're running 1275 kilohertz okay so it's a much higher frequency much greater detail so you would use the megahertz um, if you're shallow water, if you're looking for detail, if you need more range, that's when you'd go to the lower frequency and get more coverage area with the lower frequency. Actually, there's a big school of striped bass right there. Look at all those fish, man. And you could just see, I mean, they we just hit a wall of fish right there. Super thick, I mean, this is, that school is 20 feet thick right there. That's a nice thick school of fish. We're gonna tap the power button and we're gonna to go to sonar, sonar source. And we are going to, we're on our 2D sonar and we gotta to go to uh, transducer settings and max depth down here now, I spoke to some of the uh, sonar engineers about this, and they do recommend um, 
setting a max depth. If you're fishing in an area like I am in Long Island Sound where we don't fish in over 200 feet, we're gonna set it to 200 feet. We're gonna take it off auto and keep it on manual with a max depth of 200. What this will help prevent is the sonar, if you ever lose signal um, or lose bottom, it will prevent the sonar from searching out to say a thousand feet or to unlimited depth. So we're just gonna keep it targeted to a 200 foot maximum depth. Um, so if you're not fishing, whatever, if your lake or body of water is only 100 feet deep, set your max depth to 100 feet. So guys, this is a real good example of when you're marking fish on side imaging right now. If you look, these are all fish. We can zoom in right here. These are all fish, um, both sides of the boat. We have a marking fish um, 10 feet of water right here. And on our 2D sonar, we're almost, so well, there's a couple fish there, but marking almost nothing on 2D sonar. So for you guys that aren't using side imaging, this is an example where you're really gonna be marking a lot of fish. Remember on the 2D sonar in 10 feet of water, we're only covering about a three foot area under the boat, okay? And these fish are not sitting directly under our boat. They're all 20 to 60 feet on both sides of the boat. So prime example why you should be using side imaging all the time. Guys, I hope this video helped a lot. I'm Mike Roy with my man, my cameraman, Andrew Ray. And I hope you like these videos. If you have any questions about the sonar, please comment, please subscribe to our channel and stay tuned for more content. Catch them up.